So let's figure out how we can use Font Pro to style our text and make it beautiful. Beautiful. Hey everybody, Joe Workman here. And in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to use the font style stack inside Font Pro. And essentially this stack allows us to style our fonts, right? Pretty self-explanatory, right? And, but there are a lot of settings, right? I, it is jam packed full of all kinds of style settings and some very advanced intricate settings um, for fonts and typesetting explicitly. So we're gonna dive in. There's a lot of settings, but the stack is really simple to use. So uh, without further ado, let's jump on in and have a look. So here we are inside Rapid Weaver and I've added a font style stack to the page. And let's go ahead and create our first style, just clicking on this blue plus. So here we have our first style and let's actually apply this style uh, to this paragraph here on the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is going to be my paragraph uh, styles, okay? And uh, to apply this to the paragraph, so you can kind of see it live in edit mode, um, we're gonna go ahead and assign this to style vault uh, number one. And I made sure in my foundation paragraph stack that I've chosen the style to be font style one as well. Okay, so from now on, we should see all of these styles reflected inside edit mode or most of the styles, uh, which is nice. So as you see inside the style stack, there are numerous buttons here. And what is nice is none, no styles are applied at all until you click a particular button. So if for this particular style, if I want to apply um, font spacing, I would click the space button. And then only then will all of these pertinent styles be applied um, to the style that I selected, okay? So right now we're gonna kind of go through, um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on each individual setting, uh, but you'll see what they are as I change them. So obviously line height, this is the height of the line. And as you see, as I'm uh, adjusting this, you'll see how the height of each line in that paragraph is changing, okay? Um, letter spacing, this is the spacing in between each individual letter. And word spacing is obviously the, the spacing between each word. Um, break spacing, break spacing is if you in a paragraph or in a text stack, you add a break or a new line, um, this is the amount of space that that new line will take up, okay? Um, then we can indent our paragraph uh, and then we can uh, adjust the margin align. So a lot of times margin align is really for large headers. Uh, if you wanna adjust that to the left or the right slightly so that it looks more visually appealing um, with the rest of the alignment of, of the text and other elements on the page. Next up is going to be font sizing. Now this is obvious, pretty obvious. Uh, we have our size units. You have sizes for small, medium, large, and extra large. Okay. Now obviously small is default, right? We're going mobile first design here. So small is going to be your mobile devices. Then you get to define the breakpoints for medium, large, and extra large. Now I should note that the default breakpoints here for medium, that is an iPhone 6 Plus. The large breakpoint is an iPad in portrait. And then the extra large is the desktop breakpoint inside foundation, which is just slightly under iPad landscape. Next we have the words styles and this is a lot of kind of miscellaneous things right so we have text alignment and what's great is we have text alignment for uh we can have text alignment for which is default for everything and then you can add a separate text alignment for tablet and above right so maybe you want to have centered on mobile but then you would like it to be left aligned on desktop okay um white space this is if you want wrapping of text. So if I were to set this to no wrap, what you'll notice is the entire paragraph here is not gonna break. It goes the entire one line, 
right? Sometimes that's something that you'd want, right? Um, and then we have a lot of other wrapping abilities. So how do we want to break words and hyphenate them? Do we want to um, break in the middle of a word or not break on a word? Do we want to hyphenate those words? Okay. Transforming of words. This is, do we want it to be all capitalized? Okay. Do we want it to be uppercase? Do we want to force everything to be lowercase? Okay. Um, decoration. This is if you want to underline the text or do you want to um, have an overline, a strike through, or a combination, an underline and an overline, or all three? Next is the decoration style, so the, un the line style. Do you want it to be solid, double, dotted, dashed, or wavy, okay? <clears throat> and last in this kind of text structure is if you have a bullet list or a numbered list, how do you want those to be? Do you want it to be a disc, a circle, a square? And then for order list, do you want it to be numbers, alphanumeric, Roman, things of that nature? Now, I want to take a break really quick, okay? I know you probably, your, your mind boggled with all those settings, right? And how you can use them and why we should use them and why do I want to increase my letter spacing or my word spacing or my line height? Like, why, okay? Now, there is a fabulous, absolutely fabulous video from a man called Tim Brown, and uh, he's one of the head honchos over at Adobe, and he does some amazing work, and he has a great video that I'm going to play a short snippet from right now that kind of explains the importance of this spacing and structure settings that I just showed you right now, and when you should use them and how to play with them for your particular font and your font family or your typeface, right? So watch this short snippet. And I, I encourage that you watch the entire video. It's just under an hour. But if you want to learn about typography and typesetting, I encourage you to watch this entire video. But right now, we're just going to play this really short snippet. This is a poor text block. You see this all over the web. Arial at a small size with long line lengths and pretty loose line spacing. A lot of times on the web you see it much looser than this. We can make this better. We can make this better with a better typeface at a better size with a better measure or line length and more sensitive line spacing. I use the terms uh, letting and line height interchangeably, but they actually have very specific meanings. Font size plus letting equals line height. What else can we do? We can adjust margins. Right? We often talk about typography and layout like they're separate interchangeable things, and they're not. They're the same thing. And we can adjust details, things like typographically correct punctuation and white space, open type features and hyphenation. In fact, I can't really show you hyphenation or open type features here in Keynote because they're not well supported. If you haven't seen uh, Marcin Wikari's Death to Typewriters on Medium, check that out because he highlights a lot of these specific details. So look at this now. Look at this difference. That's a huge difference. That's the difference between somebody maybe thinking, yeah, you're a little sketchy, or trusting you. That's the difference between a reader feeling frustrated or comfortable. That could be the difference between someone leaving or staying to read. What happens if we use a different font? Right? Now, this is what we had before, and I'm going to change the typeface. Watch. That's all I changed was the typeface. So we have to adjust other things. We have to maybe use a different size and a different measure and a different line height. We have to update the margins and the details. Right? You may not want to use the same, let's say, open type features from font to font because maybe you're using a, an alternate letter in in your first typeface and then you switch typefaces you may not want the alternate version of that same letter 
in the new typeface. And also, different fonts have different kinds of open type features. Like, one font may be completely loaded with features, and that increases its file size. You may not want to just assume that you're going to be using all of that. If you change the typeface, you have to reevaluate these details. Now, these are two very different takes, not so different, but they're two different takes on improving that first text block that we saw, that Arial text block. And here are the measurements. Totally different measurements. Good typesetting is not transferable. It depends on the typeface that's being used. Now, why aren't we improving our text like this all the time? Why don't we just go and make our typography better? So I hope that video encouraged you and gave you a little bit more understanding on why we want to use these settings to adjust our fonts. And that you don't use the same settings for every font or every typeface, right? Depending on the size, depending on the typeface, you're going to want to change your letter spacing or your line height, right? And depending on how much space you have for your text, right? Which he called the measure, which is basically the width of your stack area, right? You're going to want to adjust these settings to be different. So again, I encourage you to watch that entire video and I'll make sure that I have the link to the video in the notes here, as well as that video is embedded on the Font Pro documentation page, because I think it's a video that everybody who buys Font Pro should watch. So let's jump back in and see some more of the settings from the font style stack. So the rest of the style settings inside the style stack are really self-explanatory, right? We have opacity. Obviously, that's going to change the opacity of that particular font. We have color, which allows you to customize the color as well as the decoration color. So if you remember earlier inside the word settings, we could turn on text decoration. Well, this allows you to customize the color of that decoration. For example, let's say I had a black text and I wanted to have the underline to be red. This is exactly how you would do that by changing the decoration color. Next is going to be stroke. Now stroke makes zero sense for paragraph text. Okay. It basically adds a stroke an outline around every single letter. This really looks great for large headers, particularly bold headers, right? So you don't want to do it on a thin uh, font. It's just not going to look great. Okay. But use the stroke on a large bold font and it, it will potentially look nice. Okay, and the, the last option here is a shadow and uh, the shadows are probably going to be used mostly on headers, right? Um, you're probably not going to add it to a paragraph depending on the size, right? But um, yeah, shadows here, here are nice. And what's great about the shadows is they respond to the size of the text. So if in responsive sizing, if you're shrinking the text down on mobile and you want to keep that that shadow, it's going to shrink that shadow down proportionally to the actual size of the text, which is really nice. So I've gone ahead and added another style. Now you can add and create as many styles on the page as you want, and then you can assign them to headers and to paragraphs or using the font box stack. Make sure you check out the video on, on how we can actually apply our styles and our font families to your content. Uh, that's going to be a great video to watch to make sure that you can really leverage this across all of your content. And that's basically it for font styles, right? I mean, as you saw, there are a lot of settings. However, right, it's very simple, right? You can create kind of classes of styles that you can reuse across your entire site, right? Throw this font styles into a partial, and you now have access to all of those styles across all your stacks pages, which is really powerful right? You get to create your styles of the text and the font that you want, and then you can apply those to all of your content, right? Very powerful, right? Very simple to use, right? And yes, it will take practice on some of those more nuanced detail settings that we saw in terms of, you know, playing with the word spacing and the letter spacing and the line height. And depending on how much time you want to put into it, you can really make some stunning, stunning things happen, right? So 
I hope this helps you. This is a great tool for your toolbox. I can't wait to see how you can make the fonts and the type on your website just pop and make your sites that much better. So thank you very much, everybody. Make sure you check out the rest of our Font Pro videos, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.